Okay, so this week is this the parak is Perak Yadalid, according to the assignment of few Psukim also into into Perak Tesvav. The story begins with Yeravan ben Avot's son Avia is taken ill. And um, Avia sends his wife to go incognito to the Novi, Achia Hashiloini. Um, and uh, he, uh, don't let him know you're the queen. Of course, it's not a very smart thing to do to try to take out a Novi like that. And even though Achia Hashiloini is blind, he hears her footsteps and he says, Mrs. Zirovam, come in. And uh, he does not have a good besoda to tell her. He tells her that uh, basically her husband is a dirty rat, and um, and the, therefore he and his family, they will not see kavura. Their bodies will not come to be to to, to be nikra, come not not come to kavura, and um, besides everything else, because Yeravam was a chote umachti, not only did he sin, but he caused others to sin. Therefore, the future exile of the Aser Sashvatim, we're prophesizing something that's going to happen hundreds of years later. The future exile of the Aser Sashvatim is, going to, is on his shoulders, is because of him. This is what Acha Shalini tells him. But, he says, your son that you're coming to ask about is going to die. But the good news is that he will be buried properly. The, the, the Gezeira, the Klala, that uh, the family of Yeravam will not come to Kavura, um, will um, not be Mukim in him because he had a Dover Tov. Well, what is the what is the Dover Tov? So uh, Rash, Rashi, based on Chazal, says we know that Yeravam ben Avot set up um, set up roadblocks to prevent people from being Oloregel, and um, and the um, his son Avia was one of the officers at the roadblocks. And he would not only let people pass, but he, uh, uh, one time or sometimes, uh, actually went, went himself. So he didn't stop people from Miguel Lorego. That is the, that was the Dover Tov that he had. Even though he will die, uh, he will be, um, um, he'll be Zeche, he'll be Zeche to, to Kavura. Did you know that his son did that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I would have to guess no. But, uh, I mean, even the Navi doesn't tell her what it was. Dover Tov. Maybe he didn't want to tell her. Limsabo uh, Dover Tov. And then we go back to Urchava. To the Melch Yehuda. The Navi always goes back and forth from the Yisrael, the ten tribes, to back to Urchava. And, um, by the way, when we learn, say, from Elohim in particular, with a Shmuel or Malachim, it's always worthwhile to read the uh, the, co- the co- corresponding parakim in Divrei Hayomim, which often f- fills in some missing gaps in the history. So there's not much mentioned here about Rechavim, other than his initial failing, other than his initial failing of following the Atzas and the Orim, and rather than the Atzas the Kingdom, and being tough with the people, and thereby losing basically losing the, uh, the Malchus, or ten-twelfths of the Malchus. Uh, besides that, we don't, know much, we don't know much about him. Yeah? So how does that work? Different and younger is actually a secondary parallel... Yeah, and it's actually Kesuvim. It's not considered Nevoah, it's Kesuvim. Um, don't, I don't remember offhand who wrote Divri Hayomim. Um, what? As I wrote Divriyam, I don't remember. I don't remember. The the um, it's it's Malachim is what it's what it's called. It's really the story of the of of the Malachim of the kings. Divriyamim is more of a, a global history of the time, uh, filling in some gaps. It's Kesuvim. It's it. What? Yes, and the Gemara always asks. The Gemara always asks and gives Gishmaka answers to uh, what. What the uh, what the contradictions are? Does one have more weight over the other? No, no, they're both they're both part of Tanakh. They can't so they can't they can't argue with each other. So it's it's that they um, so if the, if we find a contradiction, it means that each one is telling us a different point, a different aspect, and that ha- and it has to be resolved. The um, so in in different Hayomim, we're presented with a little bit of a different picture of Rechavim. 
Although well, at first we presented with somebody who is somewhat of a weak, of a weak king, um, here it, it begins that he actually um, builds tremendous fortifications and, the, and, and walled cities and armed cities and he stockpiles in the cities armaments, stockpiles food. Um, he's really, uh, you know, the, the defensive king. Um, which is not going to do him much good, but that's what he's doing the first three years. And it says that the first three years of his, of his reign, he went Biderech David Aviv. He went in the path of David HaMelech. But after all the success and all of the uh, build-up of the military and the build-up of the, of, of the, of the economy, it's, it says Derech David Aviv. That's the Lushan, his ancestor David. You find we'll find out a lot in Sefer from the, um, the, um, they they start to slip. It says Rachavim starts to slip, and the people start to slip, and they're not going with Derech Hatayra, and that's when Hashem, Hashem sent up to them Shishak Melech Mitzrayim. The Shishak Melech Mitzrayim invaded invaded um, Malchus Yehuda, and um, he ba- basically pillaged pillaged a lot of the treasuries that, um, that Rechavim had accumulated, including Otsros, Yerushalayim, and including, and there's a chazal, a very long chazal about this, including the famous throne of Shlomo HaMelech, the ivory throne of Shlomo HaMelech, uh, which had a lot of, a lot of Goliaths, a lot of Tiltulim. Shishak took it down to, to, um, to, uh, to Mitzrayim. But um, when it says when Shishak invaded, so by, uh, here we go, the hot cold of the era of Rechavim, the Divine Yom says, Vayikonu, that the people were humbled, were humbled by this and they cried out to Hashem. In other words, the prosperity, this sounds like a typical Vayishman Yeshurun Vayivot, that Yeshurun got fat and rebelled, and very often prosperity is at least as, is, is, uh, at least as big a Nisayan as poverty. And um, they they went they would they they went off the path when they had um, when they had all of this all of this prosperity, but then when the Shishak came that sobered them up and they were humbled, and because of that the Navi Shemaya Shemaya was that same Navi that came. Remember when the initial split, Rechavim got an army together and he wanted to uh, be Abraham Lincoln and stop the secession. And uh, the Navi Shmaya was sent to him to say, no, Hashem doesn't want you to do that. Don't go to battle. And he listened. Here too, Shmaya comes to tell him that because you are Nichna, Hashem will make sure that Shishak does not destroy you, but you're going to get a big slap on the wrist. And the Shishak does come and pillages a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of the uh, treasures of, um, of Rechavah. And after Rechavim dies, we're introduced to Rechavim's son, Aviyam. We'll see how much we cover tonight to see if we're going to start talking about his son, Aviyam. Throughout Sefer Malachim, we get to very, they seem to be using the same names. The name of Yeravim's son was Aviyam, otherwise known as Aviyam. It's like Yonason and Yehonason. And uh, Rechavim's son is Aviyam Melech Yehuda. Later on, we're going to have Yoram on one side, Yoram on the other side. It's uh, easy to get confused. But uh, we have two Aviyams here. There's Aviyam ben Yeravam, who's, he's the one who died, uh, who, who had a good thing, who, didn't, who allowed the Jews to be Ola Regal, and then the Aviyam who, who, who succeeds Rechavam to the throne. Okay, now let's, that's, that's the storyline of tonight, and let's go into some of the very, very uh, interesting, I think, and uh, very subtle in Yonim of this parak, and th- I think there's a lot we can learn about Nevoah from the beginning of the parak. When Yeruvam tells his wife, don't tell the Navi who you are, because if he knows who you are, he's only going to say bad things about me. Now, at first glance, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. A Navi is nothing more than somebody taking dictation from God. Right? God, you tell me what you would like your of them to know. So if I don't like him, I'm going to say a bad nevuah. And if I do like him, I'm going to say a good nevuah. At first glance, it doesn't make any sense. But that's what the Pasuk says. The Pasuk says that don't tell him who you are, because if you tell him who you are, I know he's never said anything good about me. So what, what does this mean? So if you look at the Redak, if you look at the Redak, the Redak says two important things 
about, about Nevoah. Remember, I said we're not going to do too much in the text. But the... Um, Right, the, the 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 Radak says because he knew that Achia hated him. He hated him because Yeravam went off the derech. Now remember, Yeravam was Achia's protege. Achia, we we first introduced to them Achia and Yeravam ben Nevada, the two gedolei hador, talking and learning on such a high level of learning of Torah, nobody else could understand them. And Achia Shiloni is the one who who is the navi who who anoints Yeravam ben Nevada to be the melech of Yisrael. And boy was Achia disappointed with his protege, Yeravim. He had every reason to hate him, and Yeravim knew that Achia hated him. So the Redak says that, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he, since Achia hated him, so he's only going to say bad things to me, about me. Okay? The next thing that he says is that Yeravim, and the two things I, I think I'll show you are connected. The Ravim tells his wife to bring a gift. To bring a gift to the Navi Takya Shiloni, though specifically certain 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 delicacies to bring to bring to the Navi as a gift. What is you know, what is he Hasid Shareva? You know, what's he what are what are you bringing him what are you bringing him gifts? So the um, the Radak says it was the Derech. And when you went to a Navi, you brought him a, a gift. Now the first time we encountered this in Navi is by Shaul. Shaul, when he went, when the, 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 the events leading up to Shaul's meeting Shmuel, Hanavi, who ultimately anoints Shaul as king, Shaul is looking for his lost donkeys. And as the Ramban says, as the Rambam says, in those days, a roer or a Navi was somebody who asked for anything. You know, my donkeys are lost, where are they? So they couldn't find the donkeys, they're searching all over. So Shaul says, is there a Navi around here that we could ask? You know, like, you know, there's got to be a GPS somewhere around. So they say, yeah. They, they, they yes, there's a Navi in, in this city. All right? And it was Shmuel. So Shaul tells his, 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 his uh, valet, his nar, um, well, we can't go to the Navi. We have nothing to give him. We have nothing on us. We have nothing, nothing to give him. How can we go to the Navi? So the nar says, it's okay. I have something. We can give it to him. What's, what's, that, what's that all about? So the Mepharshim there say that the reason that they would g- bring something to the Navi was to establish a connection. Establish a connection between the Navi and the person. The fact that I'm giving you something, you're benefiting from me. You're having Hanor from me. That establishes a, a connection. By the way, I, I, I believe, I don't have a mock for this, but I, I can't believe that if I looked hard, I wouldn't find that is that part of that Zerkat Kohanim is connected to the fact that the Kohanim receives Krumah from the people who are they, who, who them blessing. All right? There's already a connection because Kohanim are being supported by the people that they are giving the brachas to. There's that, that, that established a connection. The fact that I'm benefiting you, that establishes a connection and enables you to hook into HaKadosh Baruch Hu to get to answer the request that I am asking of you. And that's the same thing over here. The Radak cross-references to the, to the case of, 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 um, of Shoal and, and Shmuel. One can also say, and we're going to talk a lot more about this, that that's why Yitzchok of Inu wanted Esav to bring him the Matamim. I say the Matamim. Right, to bring him at time, to bring him the special delicacies because Yitzchok wasn't giving him a bracha. Yitzchok needed to receive a nevua of the bracha. Right? So the bracha wasn't just plain bracha. You know, it's also like a bench. You know, simcha lukim kefaim It was it was nevua to give over the 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 legacy and the heritage. Of of Klal Yisrael, he had to get a nevuah. As a matter of fact, the the Rabbeinu Bechaye on the spot says a different twist, and I'm sure they're both emes on aseli matamim, and that the reason Yitzchak wanted the food, he says, because the Gemara says that in order for a navi to get nevuah, he has to be besimcha. So, for example, we're going to learn later that Elisha, at one point, Elisha is with 
with, with the army of both, at, at one point the armies of Yehuda and of Yisrael had joined for forces. It was Yehoshaphat who was a Melech Tzadik and Yehoram was a Melech Russia of this and they were in dire straits. They were, they were going to, a, to fight with Moab and there was no water and they were going to die. And they came to Elisha to help us and Elisha was so angry at Yehoram. He, was, he, had, he felt anger towards Yehoram. He said, if not for Yehoshaphat, I wouldn't be helping you. And because he was angry, he couldn't get Nebuah. So he said, is there a musician around? He needed a musician in order to feel Simcha. Without Simcha, without Simcha you don't get Nebuah. So the musician calmed him down. And he felt good, and um, he got nevuah. The Rabbein Bachaya says, what music did for Elisha, good food did for Yitzchok. That's why, now because the, to get nevuah, I'm not a Navi, that if I'll ever be a Navi, but um, the, 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 the getting, that, that level of closeness to Hashem requires a, a harmony between the guf and the neshama. We're not looking for a siluk. We're not looking for the neshama to leave the guf. In Judaism, we never look for that because we have a word for that. That's called death. The, um, we're looking for the neshama and the guf to, to, to be in harmony with the neshama in, in control. And that elevates the guf to the, to the degree that a human being can accept communication from, from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. All right, that's that's Nabu, yes. I'm 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 not aware. I'm not aware. Yeah. Of of examples of gifts given to, to Moshe Rabbeinu. So here we have Yoravam is sending gifts to his wife whom he wants to go incognito to get um to ask the Navi for Nevoah, what's going to happen for to his son. And he says, don't let him know who you are, because if he knows who you are, hey, forget it, we're not going to get anything good. So what, what, what is this all about? Did Yerupen Yerup was a big time of And we know that. Did he not understand Nevoah? Yes. Get on his good side, because, but but he didn't know who it was. He he doesn't want the navi to know who he was. So I don't know. Yeah, that that could be the um, so. It, but what we find a lot about navu is it's not so simple. It's not so simple. I'll give you another example, which is very complicated in the way the Mefarshim understand it, but. Towards the end of Sefer Malachim, I'm going to encounter the uh, famous situation with Yoshia, who, the Melech HaTzadik, that uh, they found the Sefer Torah, the Sefer Torah in the Kodesh Kadoshim, which normally the Sefer Torah is rolled to be at Barashis, the Sefer Torah that's, that's, that's in the Kodesh Kadoshim, and it was, they found that it was open to the Kololois in Kisavai. And uh, Yoshio saw that and tore his begadim, and he sent uh, delegation to Hulda Hanavir to ask her what does this all mean and she ultimately did not have good things to say that it means that the destruction is going to come soon and it did it came in the, uh, as soon as Yoshio died it started um, it, it was within one, within, within one generation the Gemara asks why in the world did he send delegation to Chulda Hanavia? Why didn't he send it to Yirmiyahu, who was active at the time? So we have said two answers. One answer where he gives that Yirmiyahu wasn't around. He was out of town. He had gone to bring the ten tribes back. A separate discussion. The other answer is because she was a woman. Women are have Rachmanis. What do you mean women have Rachmanis? If it's a Nevoah, it's a Nevoah. I mean, she just Kaddish Baruch Hu, what's what's on the bulletin board up there? There's nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. You see, it does have to do with me. You see, it does have to do with with the Navi, and this is something that's very, very and, and not, not so easy to understand. But th this is really the 
primary, one, one of the Rambam's Yud Gimel Ikrim is, of course, one of the Ikrim is Nevoah. Because if you, if, you, if you don't believe that God communicates to man, you don't have Judaism. God has to communicate with man. That, that possibility has to be there. Right? That pipeline has to be there. It's one of the Yud Gimel Ikrim. Second one, though, is the uniqueness of Moshe's Nevoah. That only Moshe Rabbeinu's Nevoah could be Torah. And no, but no other Novi's Nevoah could be Torah. Because Moshe Rabbeinu spoke to Hashem ponim al ponim, the Aspaklaria Hameira. Meaning, what Moshe Rabbeinu gave over to us was Hashem's message unadulterated, not filtered through Moshe's Neshama. Straight dictation. I'll give you an example. Give you an example. Let's say I have a secretary. I have a secretary, and uh, the way I uh, write letters is I call him the secretary, like in the good old days, and um, I, I dictate letters. To her. And she takes shorthand, right? And they, I don't think they don't do that anymore, right? And uh, she types my letters, right? And then she gets another job, I get a second secretary, and I dictate the letters to her. Is there any reason to expect that my letters will sound different with the second secretary than the first? No, because it's, it's me. It's me talking, same letters, same, same style of writing, same style of communicating. But I could write letters differently. I could call in the secretary and say, listen, I want to get the point across to so-and-so that I'm very appreciative of everything he did and uh, wish, you know, wish his family the best and you write it. Yeah, that's, people do that. People do that. And then, let's say, then I get a second secretary. You can expect that the letters will sound different because I'm not writing those letters. I'm getting the point across, but the two, Rachel and Leah, may be hearing the message a little differently and is being filtered through their neshama and is being given over. The Chazal tell us that no two Nevi'im prophesy in the same style. And that itself, at first glance, makes no sense. Right? I mean, anybody, anybody who, who knows Navi, knows Tanakh, you give him a few psukim, you say, uh, which, who, who, whose style is this? Your Miyahu, your Shaya, or your Cheskel? He'll be able to tell you. Why do they have different styles? If all they're doing is giving over dictation from Hashem, it should all sound exactly the same. The Torah says, the reason no two Nevi'im sound the same is because Nevoah is filtered through their Neshama. That's why it can't be Torah. Because it's they're given, the Rambam says, often a marshal. There's a metaphor, there's a vision that has to be interpreted. V'chuli. So you see from all of these examples that I gave that it is possible, it is possible for a, a, a two different Nevi'im to interpret the same message differently. And there is a possibility that a, an Achia Hashiloni could interpret the, the vision and the metaphor and the riddle and what a Kaddish Baruch Hu is saying differently for different people. If he has a sin, if he has a hatred, an enmity towards somebody, Yerav ben knew that it would be possible for him to interpret it differently. And that's why Yoshiyahu sent to hold the Hanaviyah in that Gemara because she's a woman and she's soft. And if, this, if there was any possibility of interpreting the Navua in a kinder way, it would be through Hulda. So we see from here that this is, right, and we're going to talk a little soon about Mr. and Yitzchak on this, on this level also. But let's get back to, let's get back to our, um, our story over here. The Malbim, Kedar Kedish, of course takes much more pragmatic much more pragmatic view of what's taking place. He's so wonderful. He has such a a political mind. And the Malbum gives two other reasons why, uh, why Yeruvam did not want Achi Hashiloni to know that he was the one that was sending. He says in the first place, he said he did not want it to get out to his people that he believes in Hashem. <laughs> what? Right? He's, he's against Achia Hashiloni. He's telling the people to go to the false prophets, to the Nevi'e Habal. Don't, don't go. So the last thing he wanted, right? The last thing he wanted is for the tabloids, to the paparazzi, get a picture of, as he tells her, of his I want you to go incognito. 
and, um, and, and, and there's a, I don't want anybody to know that you're going because uh, I, I, it's bad for my reputation if I am the one that's going to ask, to ask a Navi Hashem. That's one shot in the Malbim says. The other shot, which is also interesting, a little bit more subtle in the Malbim's understanding of, of Nevoah, the Malbim says that often Nevoah can be compared to the Urim Betumim. Uh, as, as we'll come across as we go through, as we go through Nevi'im, the Urim Betumim always responded to the question being asked, not more. Very specific to the question asked, not more. You know, o- almost to the point of, uh, you know, the, the old joke, uh, could you pass the salt? Yes, I could pass the salt. You say that to Urim Betumim, you're not going to get any salt. Right? Yeah, they, 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 right? The, the Urim Betumim responds exactly to the question asked. He says the same thing with the Navi. He said, Yeruvim Benevot did not want Achia Hashiloni to say any Nevoa about his government, about the Malchus. He wanted Achia Hashiloni to look at a lady who's crying over an ill son and tell the lady a very personal thing about her and her child. But if, if Achia would know that she's the queen, then he would ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what should I say about this horrible kingdom of the ten tribes that's gone off the path? So that's why he didn't want her to know, of course. It's always a mistake to try to fake out a Navi, and um, it, it uh, didn't work. So does that mean that, that it's possible for a Navi to sometimes make up his then make up, to basically give an interpretation of an event without consulting no, 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 with consulting HaKadosh Baruch Hu. With, it's, it's, that's, that's what the in other words, he, he's saying a Navua. A Navua is, he, a Navi knows when he's getting a Navua, he, he's in a prophetic trance, he's getting a Navua, and he has this image, he has this image of, of, of some kind of a vision, which is not clear, it's not written, doesn't say, not by Hashem al Moshe Lemor, right? It's, it's a vision that he has to interpret through his Neshama, and through his, his being, and that's why different Nevi'im have different styles. And um, if, 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 he is, 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 if he is feeling, if he is feeling, you know, Elio Hanovidik, that I want to take Nakama against these horrible people who are being unfaithful to Hashem, he could be interpreting the Nevoa that way, legitimately. In other words, the Nevoa may not be a very clear-cut thing. There may be parameters of how to interpret this Nabu. If I have a good day and get a positive answer, Absolutely. it's also considered part of the deal. Yes, yes. That's what we're seeing from here. That's, that's the subtlety over here. And that's going to be very, very, when we get back to discussing Yitzchak and Rivka, it's going to be very relevant. It's going to be very relevant. You're right. That could be exactly that. Exactly that way, yes. get no, only uh, uh, he may not get it. That's why you see, Elisha wasn't getting Nevoah, and he, uh, he said, I need a musician. So he eventually got it. You're not always going to get Nevoah, no. You're not always going to get Nevoah. By the way, this, this child, Avia, I don't normally bring Kabbalah into the thing, but he seems to be a pretty good chap, and um, at least he had a good side, a good side to him. The, uh, the Zayhar says, that Mashiach ben Yosef is going to come from Yeruvah ben Nevot through Avia. And that was, that was really the Dover Tev, and he's going to come to Gevura, meaning he's not rejected. He's not rejected, and there is a future. There is a future. Where, you know, Gevura is connected to Tchiyas HaMesim, and so there is a future from this neshama, from this child, that, that Nusheikh ben Yosef is going to be a descendant from his line. Obviously, he was married with children already. And the, um, that's a very, very interesting Zayar. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Yitzchak and Rivka. It's, 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 it's too much of an opportunity to uh, forego, and it's so. So you say this, Dick, and it's relevant. Relevant over here. I'll try to be. I'll try to be brief. 
the um, there, there are a lot of, in my opinion, misconceptions about what was going on between Yitzchok Avinu and Rivka Imenu. The Yitzchok Yitzchok's um, acceptance of Esav was really the most logical thing that any father would do. Um, Kaddish Borko told Avram Avinu that he's going to be the father of the nation. He made the father of the nation. And uh, Avram Avinu ended up, at least in the beginning, with two children, Yishmael and Yitzchak. It never occurred to him in his wildest dreams that, that the nation he's building is not going to come from both of them. I mean, if I'm the father of the nation, you know, both children. <laughs> you know, you don't have, um, you're not going to have a very big nation if every generation chooses which one is going to be the Jew, right? So, um, but it wasn't to be, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, through Sarah, told Avram that Yishmael was to be rejected. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avram that all of his children are not going to be part of Klal Yisrael, but he really was telling him, your child is not a child, your child is another generation Av. Your child, we need a second generation patriarch, because Av, only one in the family. Children, there could be many. I mean, second generation Av. Yitzchak Avinu, I'm the Av, and my children are going to be the children. Why should I think differently? Especially, okay, uh, my, my father rejected my half-brother Yishmael. He was the son of a Shivcha, son of a Pilagesh. He wasn't the son of a Keres Abayis. I only have one wife. I'm a Kaidish Kadoshim. wife Rivka, the same womb, same birth. <laughs> so Yitzchak, there's no question that he sees these two children. Yitzchak is a very smart man, is a very astute man, and uh, the, um, he, he knows that you can't build a Klal Yisrael without Yaakov. Without the Ishtam Yoshe Vaholim, without the special spirituality that Yaakov is going to bring to this nation, from whence is going to come a, a tribe like Levi, and the Dundi Avedu in the Beis Amigdash, a tribe like Yisachar, who are going to be the uh, Yodevina and the, uh, the Dayanim, the judges, and, 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 the, and the teachers, so the whole spirit, spirituality necessary for the nation is going to come from Yaakov. But, hey, you know, the nation needs businessmen. The nation needs sailors like Zebulun. The nation needs farmers like Osher. The nation needs warriors like Dan. The nation needs executive leaders like Yehuda. So that's not coming from Yaakov. and ain't him. It's clearly coming from Yitzchak. Now, Yitzchak has problems. I see that. Uh, excuse me, from Esav. Thank you. The Esav clearly has problems, but I'm his father Yitzchak, and I'm going to be Mechanechim. Right? I'm going to be It never occurred to Yitzchak. It never occurred to any rational human being that, that okay, which one? It makes, it makes, makes no sense to take that approach. So Yitzchak was, was, was going to give the bracha that he ultimately gave Yaakov. You look at the bracha, it was the bracha of leadership, which makes sense to give to Esav. Why didn't Rivka buy into that? Rivka didn't buy into that for one very simple reason. She had a Navur. She had a Navur. She had a very difficult pregnancy. Something was going on there that really, really disturbed her. But Taylor Lidrash as Hashem. And she says, Shnei Goyim Bevitnech. Two separate nations in your womb. Which means only one of these children are going to be part of Klali so which means there has to be a third generation of not yet ready for B'nai Yisrael or B'nai Yitzchok, how they would have been called. Not yet ready for prime time. As the Lashon Chazal is not yet Mito Shalema. Not Mito Shalema. Uh, so the, therefore, so she had this Nevoah. The Rabbeinu Nisim in the Doroshes brings a Raya from here that a Navi who has a Nevoah, who is not told to give, to say over this nevuah to somebody else is not permitted to give over this nevuah. And he brings a raya from the fact that Rivka never told Yitzchak. So Yitzchak was blind to the reality. Right? He was physically blind at the time, and he was Akadosh Baruch Hu withheld the nevuah from him. Now, I have a theory that I'm going to share with you. It's not directly related to the point that I want to make, but I think it's very, very important. Rivka was a smart lady 
who was, we know, in awe of her husband Yitzchok from the very beginning, had to ask herself the question, why is Hashem not telling Yitzchok? Why is he not telling Yitzchok? From the very beginning, she didn't go to ask her husband or her father-in-law, Avraham, because whatever, whatever physical nevua of that that they so abundant bekirba she was getting, her husband was just glad he died happy. You having the you know? So Hashem's not giving him any messages. She's obviously giving it only to me. Why is he not giving the message to Yitzchak? Okay. And the answer it really deserves a much broader discussion. But the answer is really very obvious if you think about it. Because Esav, in whose gullus we are now, Esav, whose the destiny of Yaakov and Esav are to be intertwined, they're twins. Esav, with whom Yaakov wrestles, by Yovik Ish Imo, uh, it's a wrestling match. The, the picture of a wrestling match. In the wrestling match, you often can't tell whose arm is, belongs to which, which person and whose leg. It's arms and legs intertwined throughout the Laila. Until Alos Hashacha, the Laila is Golos. We are destined to be intertwined with Esav throughout the night. In order for us to survive the Golos of Edom, Esav needed redeeming qualities. He could not be a barbarian. Anybody who pictures Esav, like superficially, like in some of the children's book, as some hairy barbarian, you know, halitani lam in the odom is, in my opinion, insulting my great grandfather Yitzchok and great grandmother Rivka. They raised this guy. But you think Yaakov ate with a knife and fork, and he he ate with his fingers, you know, holding like a big hunk from, you know, like a thigh of an animal arm while, while uh, uh, Yaakov is dentally cutting up his, uh, his meat nicely. He's raised by Yitzchak and Rivka. If you want to picture Yitzchak the hunter, picture a British nobleman on a fox hunt. That's the way you have to picture Yitzchak, because, um, Esau, because he was brought up in the house of Yitzchak and Rivka. And Hashem gives Rivka a nevuah. Listen to this nevuah says, Rivka, I trust you. You have two children, two separate nations. One of them, it's going to be very obvious which one is going to be the Jew. The other one is going to be a guy, and they're going to be at each other's throats throughout history. I am trusting you to bring them both up. I need them, I need Esau raised in your home. Clearly, that's why he didn't tell my husband. My husband, Yitzchak, is Midas Hadin. No way does Yitzchok raise Esav if he knows he's a guy. No way. He wouldn't do it. Out. Go to Yishmael. No way. So who, who, who loved whom better? <laughs> right? Rivka raises Esav. We know that Esav trusted Rivka more than his wives. Right? <laughs> he trusted Rivka more than his wives. Okay, so here, so the same Rabbeinu Nisim, let's get back to our thing. There's a lot to discuss about this. But the Rabbeinu Nisim asks, what was Rivka worried about? Yitzchak needs a Nevoa to give a bracha. Why did she think that, what? She, she, she knew that the Nevoa has to, the bracha has to go to Yaakov. She knew that, the Rabbeinu Nisim asks. Right? So, it's not going to work to go to Esav. A, it's not going to work to go to Esav, and B, what, you think if when, when, when Yitzchak finds out that he got faked out, be, <laughs> it's going to be a valid bracha? The whole thing doesn't make sense, he says. He says, but it does make sense. Because she knew that the time had come for Yitzchak to finally get the nevuah. Because this is the seminal moment. It's given over the brachas. This is the seminal moment. And Kaddish Bracha can't keep it a secret anymore. She was afraid that Yitzchak, because of his Ahava for Esav, would be able to tilt the Nevoah and have a valid Nevoah going to Esav. You should run the Rebbeinu said, but koach to filosai. And with the strength of his Ahava for Esav, he would somehow make it that Esav could remain part of Klal Yisrael. The Rivka knew, no way, we can't build a nation with Esav. Because the, it, it would have been theoretically feasible. They say, the whole story doesn't make sense unless you believe that there was a possibility 
that Yitzchok would get a Nevuah to give the bracha to Esav. Otherwise, what's the whole charade? Makes no sense if that was never going to happen. It was a possibility to happen because he was a Navi and he had a connection to Esav. Esav always fed him, gave him the food that he liked, and Esav was exquisite in Kibar Ave'em. And Yitzchok, you know, the, the, as we say, the, the, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Esav was the one who got, got in trouble, you know, was always getting, the, the Rebbe is always calling, calling, calling him, this kid's, uh, this kid's a troublemaker. He's, the father, Yitzchok, put all of his kachis into Esav. Rivka was afraid that Yitzchak would be able to tilt the Nevoah through his nefesh for the sake of, of Esau. That's why she made that charade that Yaakov should be there and the Nevoah should come and it was a Nevoah. Because it was a Nevoah, then Yitzchak knew Gamba Ruch I mean, this is not Stam, he faked him out. I got the Nevoah with this, I call Kol Yaakov, Ayyadayim Dei Esau in front of me and being a smart man, he finally got the vision. He finally understood what was going on over there. Okay, so Nebu is not a simple thing. Bez Hashem, we hope we'll be zeichet to be living at a time when, uh, when we'll have Nebu again. We'll be able to see some of these things firsthand. Okay. Um, you're often ben Avot. If you look at the booklet on page 46, for those of you who have a book, I'm sorry I didn't bring in for those, but it's okay, just a, a small quote from Pirkei Ovos. It's the last reference on page 46. Anybody who's Mizaka the Rabbim, anybody whose life causes others to have schus, as we'll see the contrast to Yeruvim ben Nevot. Yeruvim got people to do Averis, I get people to do mitzvahs. Such a Kodesh Baruch will see to it, Ein chet bo al yodo. He will not sin. But anybody who will cause the the rabbim, the many to sin, ain't ma speaking biyodo lasos teshuva. They will will ain't ma speaking biyodo. I'll translate this. We will not give him the opportunity to do teshuva. Moshe zocho viziko es harabim. Moshe obviously was mezake the rabbim. So he brings down the Pasuk that shows that Sidka Sashem Osa Mishpat of Yisrael, everything that the Jews did was attributed to Moshe Rabbeinu's credit. Yeravam Chata Vehechti Es Arabim. Yeravam sinned and caused the Rabbim to sin. Chet Harabim Tolui Bo. The sin of the, of the Rabbim, of the community, is hanging on his, on his neck. And that quotes, quotes a Pasuk, quotes a Pasuk, Al Chata Is Yeravam Asher Chata Basher Hechti Es Yisrael. From the Pesuk in the beginning of the next parak, or parak Tezva. So let's, let's see what this Mishnah says. The Mishnah says that Kol Hamachti Es Arabim Ein Ma Spikin Biyodo Lasos Teshuva. They do not oh, give him the opportunity to do, to do Teshuva. And like Rav and The question is how to understand this. i would say this Lashon, Ein Ma Spikin Biyodo Lasos Teshuva, also appears in a different Mishnah. The Mishnah Masech the Yuma. Mishnah Masech the Yuma, in the last parak says, Ha'omer Echto Vyoshuv, Echto Vyoshuv. Ain't my speaking beyond the last is tshuva. Somebody says, I'm going to sin and do tshuva. I know tshuva works. A sin and do tshuva, you know, listen. We know, I know my Rebbe taught me that even on a person's deathbed, he could do tshuva. So, hey, the case is 11, you know, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to live it up. I'm going to do tshuva at the end. So, ain't my speaking beyond the last is tshuva. We don't, my speaking beyond the last is tshuva. Now, when I learned the Mishnah, I understood the Mishnah how many days. And I, I think it's a legitimate way to understand it. But I'm not sure it's the MS. Right. What happens if a person does that? He lives his life, he's a playboy, he mamish does everything that's usher, and that's his plan. And they say, okay, when I'm 80 years old, I'm going to stop, I'll go to a kolil, and I'll do tshuva. And the kolil will accept my tshuva. And let's say he turns 80, and his 80th birthday, that's his plan. He looks back at his life. And he's sick to his stomach. 
He genuinely regrets what he did. How could I do that to my creator? How could I spit in his face? How could I have done that? I'm, a no, I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. And he does such a, a, a heartfelt teshuva, such a heartfelt teshuva on, 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 on what he did. What he did. So why shouldn't that be a valid teshuva? He said, God, if you ever set me back down here again, I will never do that. Either. He's really doing a full, full total teshuva. Right? Why shouldn't it work? The Terence says it will work. But it says, Ain't my speaking beyond the last is the shuva. Right? You, I, can't, I won't give you the opportunity to do shuva. Uh, you'll die suddenly in a plane crash when you're 79 and a half years old or something like that. Or you'll be sitting, you'll be sitting in the shear and the, and, and, and the, the rub is about to say something so inspiring and it's going to hit your heart to really get you, and the Kaddish Baruch is going to make that your cell phone is going to buzz at that moment. Right? In other words, I could, <laughs> Kaddish Baruch, I could control the world. I'm not going to give you the opportunity to do tshuva. If you do tshuva, it will work, but I'm not going to give you the opportunity to do tshuva. It's not the way the Rambam understands it. The Rambam and the Shimon the Prokim, the Rambam and Shimon the Prokim says, and he starts off talking about Paro, a Kaddish Baruch hardening Paro's heart. And he says, I thought a, I thought a Kaddish Baruch does not interfere with a person's Bechir. How could a, how could a Kaddish Baruch interfere with a person's Bechir? And if, most certainly, a Kaddish Baruch can't punish anybody if he made them do it. How could he punish Paro for not letting the people go if he didn't let Paro let the people go? So Ramah says, of course, a Kaddish Baruch never punishes somebody for, um, uh, for something that he made them do. But Paro, because of all the evil, because of all the avodas perach, because of all the subjugation and the, th- and, the, the and, and, and the throwing the children into the Nile, he did such horrendous, horrific evil that a Kaddish Baruch Hu had the right to interfere with his bechira chavshes and not let him do tshuva. He was punished for all the terrible averus that led up to the point that this guy is so bad, I'm not letting him do tshuva. I am, yeah, I'm interfering with his Bechir Chavshis. I'm going to harden his heart so that he can't do tshuva. And the Rambam says the same thing by Yerof and Ben Avot. That if you, if you are responsible for all these people going off to Derech, where you think I'm going to let you do tshuva and you're going to be in Gan and all these people are in Gehenim. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. What about Esau? Will this be determined? No, he was not predetermined. He was not. Pre- he was predetermined to be a fine, upstanding British nobleman. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you have to know how to interpret these midrashim. Hakadosh Baruch Hu creates different people. With the, first of all, some people create as Jews, some people create as Goyim. That's a pretty strong predetermination, right? He creates some people who have inclinations to certain things. Some people have inclinations to the anger that they have to overcome. Some people have a stronger sexual drive or a stronger drive to violence than others. These are, these are where Kodesh Baruch creates people and they have these inclinations, they have to overcome it. Yaakov, Yaakov was born with a strong inclination for spirituality which he had to overcome and learn how to outwit an Esau and outwit a Lavan and go out of the Ohel and be a man of the world, take the Torah, he went against Yaakov, whose Mida was Emes, had to learn to go against his Mida. Esau had a tendency to manipulate his violence. I'm sorry. The, um, I had an inclination towards, towards, towards violence, but, you know, like the Rambam says, it could have been the Sheikhet. You know, there, he had his inclinations, and Yaakov used his Bechira properly, and Esav, uh, Esav failed in his Bechira test. He could have been a very upstanding, um, upstanding redneck. Right here, I don't know <laughs> what it is. Um, so the, the, there is a possibility, the Rambam says, of HaKadosh Baruch interfering in Bechira to with to, to withhold our ability to... Um, to withhold our ability to um, to do tshuva. Okay, we'll hold over here. What is your interpretation with Paro? 
that Hashem created a heart that could be hardened. And by the power of the repeated things, he basically set something in motion. It couldn't be reversed. It's something that, that, that there's just a certain amount of momentum. It's like you leap from the top of the Empire State Building, but Hashem suspend the laws of gravity to keep you from going splat and regret it, you know, 10 feet from the bottom. Yeah. But, you know, you set something in motion, it's going to come to fruition. I, I, I hear, I think what you're saying is MS, the question is the language of the Torah and of Vayachatik Hashem Eslev Paro. That would be the question. According to your interpretation, right? In, in, yeah, like, you know, yeah, no, but it's not Vayachatik Hashem. Like if a person becomes addictive, let's say to certain people become addicted to crime, people become addicted to stealing, people, right? so that's, but that's not Vayachatik Hashem. That's what the way, that's what you're describing. That is a consequence of my action, I'm doing such bad things time and time and time again, I can't stop. I don't think that's, I think what's bothering the Rishonim, the Rambam and the Ramban, is the language that Hashem hardened his heart. That's, that's, the, that's the thing, but your point is a very good point. A good Thank you.